All right, we're a few days removed from Cannon Catching's commitment to BYU. And in the process of that decision being announced to the masses, there was some rumoring coming from multiple circles on how this went down and what happened along the way, steps that maybe happened from the infamous conversation between Cannon Catchings and Matt Painter and then Cannon Catchings ending up at BYU. I'm going to ask you point blank, Cart. Is this rumor true? The rumor is Cannon Catchings actually asked Matt Painter if he could return after originally decommitting. He, you know, goes national, tipped in. Everybody promotes the fact that he's available. He's not at Purdue. He asked out. And then in the interim, before he committed to BYU, the rumor is Cannon Catchings asked Matt Painter if he could rejoin the team. Do you believe that that happened or not? I No. Because why? Maybe he knew that he had made a mistake. Did he make a mistake, though? Are you asking me, or are you asking Cannon Catchings, or Purdue fans, or who are, who are you asking here? I'm asking you. I do not believe he made a mistake. I believe this kid truly, in his heart of hearts, has a goal to be a one and done, wants playing time guaranteed, wants money for doing so, and made the best decision for him. That's 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 how I see it. That's how I see it. And maybe I know I know there was some murmurs about like his mother obviously wanting him to be closer to home and play for a more, I guess, Purdue like environment. Uh, but at the end of this, like I think the the outcome is what the player wanted. And I I have a hard time believing that after this he called Coach Payne and was like, I want back in. There's just no way. Yeah, there were some pretty loud, um, I don't know, things from Cannon's family, Cannon's mom specifically, after this went down that like kind of pointed to like, this is Cannon's decision, not our decision. I think if the family had their way, they would have preferred him to stay at Purdue, play the long game, consider college like a stop. Like you're, you're there as long as you need to be there. But listen, man, some kids have dreams. Do you ever have a dream cart when you were – 17 year old kid did you have a dream nah did you dream <laughs> that's so funny to me i just i wasn't a dream guy i was very rooted in reality <laughs> did you have a goal did you have anything or... <laughs> so i was a take a day by day type guy got it okay and that's how we got here <laughs> yeah no moments no goals just get there. Just give me till midnight. Okay. Uh, till midnight. <laughs> all right. So oh, you really set me up for failure on that. But shit, man. Uh, look, I, I just think Cannon truly like got a taste of it. He went to Overtime Elite, got a taste of the professional basketball lifestyle and uh, knows that that's in his future or wants that in his future immediately over. It, it, you could say taking the shortcut over playing the long game. I don't necessarily think that's what's best for his future. But it's what's best for him and his wants and his desires right now, even if it's a little short sighted. Um, we we did do the game of like, if Cannon asks back, if you're painter, would you allow him to? And I think we both said no at the time, which makes this more interesting that it's like rumored that this happened to me. Um, do you do you think this is just originating from like sour grapes from Purdue fans, or why do you think we got some buzz that this might have happened? So, uh, that. I don't know. I think it makes Purdue maybe fans feel better knowing that like Cannon like regrets, like regretted his decision at some point. At least, at least even thought about it probably makes them feel a little bit better. Okay. Um, I want to find there was one specific thing that was put out, and I want to make sure I'm giving credit to the right person on this because this came through a couple days ago. Um I think it was from Brian Newbert, who I don't know Brian Newbert, but I uh, I've seen his work plenty of times before. And I do like really respect what Purdue fans say about him. Like, I think he does a great job from everything that I've seen. Um, I believe he was responding to someone on Twitter and he basically alluded to the fact that if Matt Painter wanted to try and get back in this recruitment he could have like maybe maybe there wasn't a straight up decision to take him back 
but at minimum there was like a decision of do we want to close the door here or not? I can't find the tweet now. I'm gonna to have to go through our Discord, so I'm gonna throw it, it to you to talk about this. But it might be on his. It, you check his Twitter. Yeah, I was scrolling through his Twitter and I can't find it. Um, I, I know it was sent in the Purdue Discord a couple of days ago, so I'm gonna go find it. Oh, I mean, the Purdue Discord is probably probably way, way, way past that now. Yeah, I know, but I'll find it. Um, hold on, here we go. Here we go. Okay, this is it. Uh, so yeah, the, the buzz and the rumor was like just floating from random egg accounts on Twitter and said, he apologized to painter. He wanted to rejoin the team. Painter said no. And then Newbert was tagged and asked, is there any truth to this? Brian Newbert tweeted this word for word. I don't cover stuff like this on Twitter, but as we wrote on our site, Purdue did have every opportunity to smooth this over or wait it out just like it did the prior few times he changed his mind on a whim. They were just done with it this time, I believe. So again, everybody in the Purdue Discord is like, Brian's really reliable. This is a good source. We certainly view him as that. Um, What Brian tweeted there, they have every opportunity to smooth this over or wait it out just like the past times. Do you take that as painter had a chance to keep cannon catchings or what do you interpret that as? See that, that that just confuses me even more because I don't, I don't really think there was a way back or even a way that paint would have took him back. That's the thing to me. Like, I feel like once you, and obviously this is a lot of projecting, but like with Purdue and how they go about things, I feel like if you kind of turn your back on that or go against that, then you just respectfully aren't a part of it. You aren't in the fold. So I, I that doesn't make much sense to me, to be honest with you. Like I couldn't see Payne doing that. Yeah, I appreciate Newbert's coverage of this. And I am very, very confident that He's right in the fact that maybe the Purdue staff or people within Purdue basketball felt like this wasn't over. Like when Cannon Catchings told them, hey, I got to decommit. I think that there was a reality there that like the door wasn't slammed shut. It wasn't, hey, there's no way I'm coming here. It was more like I need to reconsider some things. With that said, um, respectfully, I don't know what's going on. I don't have any source that will tell me what actually happened. I'm not trying to find out what actually happened. Here's my interpretation of the Newbert tweet, though. First off, uh, starting the tweet with, I don't cover stuff like this on Twitter, but then immediately like telling people what happened on Twitter is an all-timer move. Like, I I need to pull that. That's a great move by Newbert. Um, from there, he, the quote is, Purdue had every opportunity to smooth this over. To me, that doesn't mean Purdue had, like, cannon catchings in their hand and they could say yes or no to cannon catchings, that means that Painter would have had to make the promises that he never made, and they could have smoothed it over. Like, yeah, if if Matt Painter goes back on everything that Matt Painter has said or wouldn't say, he wanted a promise. Painter wouldn't give him a promise. That's your opportunity to smooth things over, is to make promises your coach won't promise. And I am not saying Matt Painter should have made the promises. But painting it as if like, oh, Purdue could have done this. Yeah, make the promise. That's why you lost him. You wouldn't have lost him if you were promising him a starting spot. And and that being twisted into, and and I don't think it's Newbert doing this, so I'm not coming at Newbert here. I, I think it's Purdue fans interpreting that as like, well, Purdue actually turned him down after he left. No, they didn't. Purdue didn't make the promise. And to me that that's what happened here um and you got to move on like that's the takeaway purdue is going to be fine purdue is going to be totally fine but this was the right move for cannon catchings given what cannon catchings is saying he wants and what purdue wouldn't offer and uh you're probably going to be better off for it like he's a really talented kid i know you disagree with me on that but like there is a world here where everyone at purdue is happier because this happened in a breakup in any relationship when they go their separate ways. Someone's got to be happier than the other one. There ain't no equal happiness. We will decide the winner of this breakup at the end of the year. I mean, Purdue's going to win more games in March than BYU will. We will be the ones deciding. <laughs> we, you get the final say? We get the final say on who wins this breakup. Okay. The NBA draft is coming up, and I've got something awesome for you. We are partnering with the people at NBA 2K Lab. 
NBA 2K is the best video game on earth. The people at 2K Lab are making some awesome stuff to make that game even more fun. And they just launched their 2024 NBA Draft Simulator, where you can find the official Sleepers Media Big Board. We ranked our top 75 players in this draft class. Me, Carter, Brian Ralph, Riley Davis. We did it together. And it is featured on the 2K Lab NBA Draft Simulator. You can take control of any team in the draft, play GM with just one click, and see our entire rankings before these videos even come out. Check out the link in the description of this video to try out the draft sim for yourself. And you can find more mini games at nba2klab.com slash nba-mini-games.